You should celebrate yourself every day, but some days you should celebrate with jewelry. Whether you want to commemorate an unforgettable moment or just bring some added sparkle to your collection, Blue Nile can offer you expert guidance and a wide assortment of jewelry of the highest quality at the best price. Go to BlueNile.com today and experience the ease and convenience of shopping Blue Nile, the original online jeweler since 1999. That's BlueNile.com. BlueNile.com. The 90-day couples have put in some tremendous work in the Florida Keys and have graduated couples therapy. But now that they're back home and reality has set in, Are they practicing what they've learned in therapy or are they still on the brink of losing it all? This is 90 Day The Last Resort Sessions. I'm Sukanya Krishnan, but you can call me Suki. The 90 Day couples were in a unique position of being in a secluded luxe resort to work on their relationship with therapists. But we all know the real work happens when you get back home. It's all about listening, communication, commitment, Their journeys definitely had some learning curves. We have Yara and Jovi here. They're joining us from their home in New Orleans to share how their journey has been since being back home. Has it been smooth sailing for them or is the ship starting to sink? We also have our resident therapists here to catch up with a couple and see if they're putting in the hard work. We've got Dr. Janie Lacey, Dr. Jason Pendergrast, and P.D. Silvera. Everyone's all here for this exclusive. So let's get to it, everybody. Yara Jovi, so nice to actually meet you, talk to you, and have you be a part of this special episode. There were a lot of sweeping revelations that were made during therapy, and you really did the work. Yeah, you know, that makes it a little bit different because, of course, to air out all of your issues just with the therapist and the groups around you, but then to also realize that there are a lot of other people who are going to watch you go through this journey as well makes it pretty hard. But it also makes you feel good, like for me, because you think that maybe somebody who have the same problem going to watch us with Joey and they're going to find a solution maybe. Maybe we can help somebody too. Yeah, we really hope that people can relate to what we went through and that can help them through their issues as well. Yara, I love what you said. I wish they could help me with Jovi. So you felt like you had more people kind of helping you, supporting you with Jovi. Oh my gosh, I feel the whole plot that need to help me with Jovi, this man. <laughs> and Jovi, did you feel like you were getting the support that you needed to defend your position and get your voice heard? Oh no, I was definitely on the back end there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just so glad to meet you guys. And, you know, I'm really glad that you took this step to be here. And I'm really glad that you're here to explore more feelings with some of our amazing therapists that you know. Uh, you know, Dr. Janie Lacey, she brings expertise when it comes to trauma and relationships right to the table. Dr. Janie, I just really want to know, what did you learn about Yara and Jovi? You know, there's a couple of things. When I think about Yara's vulnerability in connecting her past wounds to her present, you know, that showed me that she had a lot of insight to why she moves the way that she does today. And I think that was very valuable. But no one can deny she also has an incredible sense of humor and her ability to just flow with life and not take herself serious, I think, is commendable. While Jovi's focus and his steadfastness is what I would say, brings a needed balance to the relationship with Yara's personality. And he has a flexibility to have a good time and ride the fun train with his beautiful wife. Dr. Jason Pendergrast, ordained minister turned clinical therapist. You also work with the two of them. What was your particular approach when it came to the sessions with this amazing couple? This couple is so down to earth. Uh, They are just so fun to be around and they're very humble. You know, when I think about Joe and Yara, there's a solid foundation there. So to look at a couple that has a solid foundation, you just want to improve it. You just want to take them from a good couple to a great couple. And the area that I really focused on, my approach was to improve the communication and to develop a secure foundation of trust. The space to feel safe, to be able to be vulnerable, I think is important to create. Not only the communication itself, but the active listening part, the reception, the acknowledgement of feelings and to validate one another. I think it was so important to help this couple to get to the next level. So that was my approach. And uh, they did an amazing job. And congrats to them for all their success. All right, Dr. Jason, Petey Silvera coming into the conversation after decades long history as a therapist who has a specialty in past life regression therapy. So what surprised you most about Yara and Jovi? 
And I think what surprised me the most about you two was your sincere interest in therapy and taking the input from my family session with you and from the individual sessions to bring that better sense of communication into the relationship. And it was the aha moments that they had this new foundation to handle future situations and conversations that were going to come up. And that was just so impressive. It was like this very strong learning curve. So just loved working with both of you so much. Yeah, vulnerability, authenticity, steadfastness, all of these characteristics so necessary to make a relationship work. And you guys are really hitting the mark when it comes to that. It was really nice to watch it too. And now we get to like peel it apart a little bit. I hope you're ready, Yaren Jovi. Yeah, I'm ready. Wait, now, hang on. I want to start off by saying, guys, please, the compliments about y'all being funny. Oh, like, yes, 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 it's cool. Have everybody hide me up. Let's go, guys. Let's do it. I love you all, but uh, we're going to get off of this now. And she's going to be telling me all day, did you hear what they said about me? Yes, they think so I'm so cool. funny. You're so cool. Guys, <laughs> give give Jovi a compliment. I think he needs one. Dr. Lacey, you go first. <laughs> Jovi, you have a beautiful, handsome smile. We all know why you are Yara's husband. <laughs> oh, my God. Thank you so much. Now I feel so much better going into this podcast. Do you feel better? Oh, yeah. (laughs) All right, guys. Let's get into more details because we want to take a little trip down memory lane and revisit some of the highlights between the two of you. You came to the resort yearning for reconciliation, a little bit more closeness. Let's see how close they got to a happy ending. He doesn't trust me. We have trust issues. I've been hiding from you. I've been taking the birth control and I didn't tell you about that. Joey, you have a problem. Oh, I'm the problem. You manipulating me like with birth control like that is not okay we need to learn how to deal with our issue without one of us getting drunk going to a strip club is essential to learning american culture you want to have some sex therapy i would love to start with you my before we have sex i want massage our homework from the sex therapist was to cuddle no sex this is so weird at least now we know our problems and now I have the tools to work on our future. Good sex life equals good marriage. Yara Jovi, looking back and actually listening to these clips, what are you feeling right now? What is it bringing up for you? I'm feeling embarrassed a little bit. Really? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Why embarrassed, Yara? <laughs> I don't know. The Jovi and he's what a F all the time and all that <laughs> stuff. I don't know how I feel about that. How about you, Jovi? You're kind of laughing about it. Yeah, I mean, some of it was kind of funny. Some of it's also a little embarrassing. Yeah, it was uh, interesting to hear. I haven't heard all those clips yet. Yeah, well, especially the one that I'd love for you to start with, you know what, before we have sex. (laughs) That was a good one. That really resonated with me. Yeah, totally professional. Yeah, but for a lot of men and women, intimacy and sex are two different things. I feel like we're both on different planets when it comes to that. So was that a way of you saying, this is what I need before I can be intimate? And then Yara saying, let's cuddle a little bit more. What do you think? Intimacy and sex. So, you know, that all kind of stemmed off of the fact that we were talking about how, you know, she can kind of get it when she wants to get it. And it's not always available for me. Right. So it's she always needs something special. And I'm just telling her like, yeah, okay, this is all I need. Right. It's easy for me. (laughs) Okay, Dr. Jason, you're going to have to unpack that one. (laughs) Uh, One of the first issues Yara and Jovi had to tackle was secrets. And Yara decided to confess to Jovi that she's been taking birth control without him knowing. Take a listen. You know, maybe I should be relieved that Yara's being honest with me about birth control, but at the same time, I'm also thinking about the fact that she hid something that's so big from me. I am seeing some doubts about my marriage that I didn't realize before maybe getting here. And if we can't find a way to connect and communicate honestly, I don't know what that means for our future. All right. I think a lot of people out there can really resonate with that. So I'm sure talking through this issue was a difficult one for both of you. But Dr. Jason, I really need you to take the lead on this. Let's unpack this situation with Yara and Jovi. All right. Well, I got a couple questions for you guys. Uh, Yara, I'd like to ask you something. What led you to this ultimate decision to tell Jovi about taking birth control? So, first of all, I don't like to hide stuff. I need to release about that. If I have something on me, I need to tell. And I was thinking the best place is going to be to tell in the group therapy because everybody's going to share over there and everybody's going to support and understand each other. And as a female, again, I take that decision because I was just not ready in the moment and um, our family situation was not the best. 
So what I hear you saying is that you took the opportunity in group therapy to release this information, to get it out and to have a discussion about it. Yes, exactly. Why did you decide that this was the right moment to tell Jovi? Because we was in group therapy. If I would just tell him one by one, he will not understand because I repeat myself many times before that I am not ready for having a second baby. I'm not ready. He didn't understand. So I thought maybe if there will be you guys and maybe that will be like better for him to understand. I don't know. You're right. I think that is a perfect place to share in a more controlled environment. Jovi, but what were you thinking at this moment when she told you this? Uh, to be honest, I was pretty shocked and kind of disappointed in her because I feel like having that kind of issue, I feel like she should feel comfortable coming to me and letting me know that she wants to get on birth control because she really doesn't want to have another baby. And maybe she has doubts about trusting me as well. So, of course, I was the one who was like a little confused about going into therapy also. And then like having this all come out in front of the group was like a little embarrassing for me. I was kind of like, this was a big bomb in our second group therapy session that we just had. So, yeah. I mean, I kind of wish she would have told it to me privately, but I understand why she did what she did. So what I hear you saying is that you were surprised, you were shocked at this coming out in front of the group. Definitely wish she would have shared it to you prior. But when you think about sharing that in this moment, how has this benefited you guys, your your marriage, your relationship going forward? Um, You know, I think we talked a lot after about communicating better with each other and that we need to trust each other more in particular scenarios such as this. She has to be able to trust me to let me know that she wants to take birth control or make a big, you know, life decision instead of trying to do it behind my back. No, maybe it's just like we need to listen to each other. Like when I say, Jovi, I'm not ready for so many months, means you just need to take that and understand that I'm not ready. Listen to each other. The thing that I took away from this is that secrets have a sense of landing differently. Dr. Janie, do you hear what I'm saying with that? You know, when people keep secrets, right, sometimes when we're keeping that rhythm going, it also gives you a sense of control and it also gives you a sense of holding a certain narrative. But we also know as we witness that it can also be hurtful to the other person because they can feel betrayed and then we have trust issues going forward. And trust and rebuilding that trust is a hard one. Jovi and Yara, I'm sure you can agree with me on that. That must have been hard to reestablish, would you say? Oh, yeah, definitely. And guys, to be honest, I was really thinking it was going to be a lot worse. She was like, I have this thing I've been hiding from you. And I'm like, oh, my God, like, what's going on? Did you cheat on me? Like, what happened? And then she was like, I was on birth control. And at first I was like kind of relieved. And then I realized after, like, okay, you're really not trusting me at all right now to do that. In what way was she not trusting you to be a father again? Or I don't understand that. For me, it's just she didn't trust me to tell me. She's not trusting me to uh, say, hey, do you want to come to the doctor with me? I want to go get birth control. Like, I would have happily gone to do that if she would express that to me. Well, I was not agree with that. Is that not true? I don't I'm just telling so you how I feel. When you That's for months feel. explaining that you're not ready, for months explaining why you're not ready, and so other person say you need to do it, and you say you're not ready, you're not ready, you're not ready. I mean, I don't think happily you're willing to go to the doctor. No, but I will still support you no matter what, and you didn't trust me to... Yeah, and you did support me when you bring Angela. <laughs> so what we learned from that, PD is that ultimately Jovi was there for Yara. He just needed to hear it, right? Yes, he did need to hear it, Suki. And that's where the trust level comes in. So you can build on that. Once she feels heard and she says something and it's met with the request being, you know, happily embraced, that builds more trust for the next time to be able to say something that's difficult. So it's a building process. Absolutely. Okay, it seems like you're on the same page about the harm and secrets and non-disclosure and relationships, but... What about exes and former flings? Jovi, you have some explaining to do after we listen to this. If Yara does find out, I mean, what can I do? I just take the punches as they come in because going through couples therapy is not easy. And I think just getting to forget about it all for a day and go out and have fun, I think everybody needs that, to be honest. No comment. Stay with us because we're going to unpack that and so much more. Guys, we've got Yara and Jovi as we have this really special episode of The Last Resort Sessions. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Jewelry isn't a gift you give just once. It's a way to remind your loved one of a beautiful moment every time they see it. 
Blue Nile can help you find the gift that says how you feel and says it beautifully with expert guidance and a wide assortment of jewelry of the highest quality at the best price. Go to BlueNile.com and experience the convenience of shopping Blue Nile, the original online jeweler since 1999. That's BlueNile.com to find the perfect jewelry gift for any occasion. BlueNile.com. Talking about money is hard. People all over the world were taught never to talk about money, politics, sex, or religion in polite company. But on this show, my goal is to remove money from that list. And so I'm excited to bring you 50 Fires, a podcast about money and meaning from Blind Nil Audio and executive producers Chip and Joanna Gaines. Follow and listen to 50 Fires with me, Carl Richards, wherever you get your podcasts. Hi, everybody. I'm Sukanya Christian. You can call me Suki. And this is 90 Day The Last Resort Sessions. Is it cool to innocently reach out to an old flame while in a relationship? Or is that playing with fire? Another moment we saw unfold was Jovi revisiting the past. But before he started seeing Yara, Jovi had a fling with a stripper. Listen to this. I, I know strippers who work in Key West. You do? Yeah, so I got a hookup. That's one of the main reasons. Like, so I don't want my wife to find out. Don't tell the girl. No, I'm not going to, but are you okay? are you sure? So, like, look, I have no, like, emotional connection with this girl right no, now. No, 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 no. But, like, look. She will cut your huevos off. <laughs> she will cut your huevos off. Okay. <laughs> so reaching out to an old fling. Petey, I'm curious on your thoughts here and what feelings you want Jovi and Yara to work through right now. Yeah, this was a big one on the series, wasn't it? So, Jovi, let's start with you. What were your true intentions for reaching back out to Jasmine? Uh, My intention was honestly just to have a fun night in Key West. That's really what my intention truly was. I might have went a little overboard. I should not have done what I did at all. But it was really just me looking to have a good time with the guys. So wanting to have a good time with the guys and willing to take the consequences that would come with it, I assume, when you made that choice. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, trust me, I took the consequences. (laughs) Well, Yara, were you comfortable with the relationship forming despite them knowing each other before you met Jovi? I don't know. It's such a freaking high school. I'm go. I want to go to the strip club. Don't tell the girls. Like, what the hell? How <laughs> old are you? How old are you? It's so weird for me. And uh, to be honest, it was so painful because, like, why would you do that? Why would you text like some random female and have her number in your phone for so many years? Like. How will you feel if I'm going to be like, oh, girls, let's go. I have this hot man waiting there for us. Let's go see them. Let's go see him. Like, how would you feel if I do that? I'm not good, of course. Yeah. I think that was a good point, Yara, that you just said. You know, Jovi, if it really truly was reversed, if Yara was reaching out to someone she formerly dated, went to hang out with him without telling you, would you be okay with that? No, of course not. And I understand that. I know what I did was wrong. I, oh, my gosh. I hate talking about this. <laughs> I know. Like, I was a piece of shit, so. No, you may have made a bad decision. A very bad decision, yes. Yes. Because, you know, truly, when we talk about old flings, this is something that couples need to discuss very early on in their relationships because boundaries need to be respected. If one partner doesn't want old flames coming back into the relationship, that has to be discussed and respected and it becomes another place where trust is going to be built within the relationship. If trust gets broken there in that space, again, it has to be rebuilt and re-earned. I would almost guarantee, Jovi, in a similar situation, would you make a different choice the next time? Yeah, after what I went through in that whole situation, I don't want to relive that ever again. So I was going to get the bad rap for this for sure, but I wanted to like I wanted to show the guys a fun time. I, like, I should have toned it down just a little bit, right? But You guys, it's American tradition, Joey says. <laughs> yeah, American tradition. I don't know if I like this one, to be honest. I don't know what's <laughs> up with that. If it, this is American tradition, I don't like that. Can we do some new ones? I don't understand. Joey, some, I have some kind of obsession with that. I don't know. Maybe when he was a child, his neighbor was a stripper. He fell in love with her. <laughs> and after the rest of his life, his life, he think about the strippers. I don't know which was the trigger, but something's going on about that. I have an idea. Since you guys like to sauce it up at night, how about you uh, put on a little show for him? Yeah, I like that idea. How about 
out, he put some shows for me at first. He need to put a lot of shows at first. He need to do a whole freaking Broadway at first. And then we go. <laughs> yeah, I don't like her humor at all. <laughs> All right, guys, we have a lot more to unpack here. We're going to talk about intimacy. Dr. JD is going to come up. And speaking of rekindling flames, the 90 day couples learn how to keep things spicy in their relationships during couples therapy. And Yara and Jovi seem to have some misunderstanding about intimacy and sex. Take a listen. You know, you're approaching sex like you're approaching anything else. You want to do what you want. And when you want, then you don't really care how I feel about all of that stuff. I do care about how you feel, but like I just don't feel like I should have to go through so much effort every time I want to have sex. I don't I, I don't think that's normal. All right, Dr. Jady, this topic is definitely in your wheelhouse. I'm going to let you take it from here. Thank you, Suki. You know, we know that the longer you are married and you are together, that your sex and intimacy have to evolve. And part of that is the communication and the connection as they are developing along their relationship. So Yara, I'm wondering, when you think about some ways that you like to receive non-sexual intimacy, what are some of those ways that you can share with Jovi? So for me, for example, it's important if for something happened, it's for we have a first for we communicate right and no fights happen because I need to be mentally ready for all of that stuff. Uh, for Jovi, he, he don't need nothing. All he needs is a naked woman. So you want to be in a place where you are mentally ready and prepared to receive all the love that Jovi's going to give you. So if Jovi did those things where he helped prepare your mind and had an experience with your mind on a consistent basis, what do you think or how can you express to Jovi what that would do for your sex life together? There is absolutely not much need to do. I'm such an easy person. All you need to do is uh, be nice to me. Be nice to me. Okay, guys. Maybe, maybe give me a massage. Oh, okay, give me a massage. <laughs> so she says, oh, 30-minute massage. I'm telling you all, if I give a 28-minute and 30-second massage, it's not good enough. She wants her extra one minute and 30 seconds I to finish. S- I set up the timer. <laughs> Yeah, she sets a timer. She don't tell me. I'm like, okay, we're all done here. And she's like, no, we're not. <laughs> I have 30 seconds left. Well, Jovi, that's where the two of you can have some agreements. If you're giving her a 30-minute non-sexual intimacy massage, then you can request, well, then I need an hour of physical intimacy. That's the negotiation of marriage in your sexual life, right? It's not one-sided. I mean, that's a hard negotiation. It can be. It depends, right? It's the art of negotiation. So how important is romance to you if we talk about being transparent in our communication? Oh, 10, for sure. So are you receptive to being softer and more in tune with approaching sex in a different way that makes Yara go back to when she first met you. Yeah, you know, I've actually been trying to do that since we left therapy, right? I've been trying to tone it down a little bit, be nicer, try to be sweet to her. And now I know when he wants something, he's too nice. (laughs) Well, you gave him the game plan, so he's uh, playing the game. Got to start early in the morning, massaging her mind with uh, nice text messages and compliments and helping her with your daughter and all the things. So when it comes time, she's feeling really relaxed and comfortable. So with everything the two of you learned through sex therapy, through communication, all the tools... I'll start with you first, Yara. How do you approach now communication when it comes to your sexual desires and your needs? Because we know that for women, sometimes we can be more unsatisfied in our sexual relationship because we don't want to communicate to our husbands and tell them, touch me here, do this, because we don't want to hurt their feelings. So how do you communicate differently now to get your desires and your needs met, Yara? I always try to communicate and say what I want. Like, I'm really vulnerable. I never really, like, try to hide and cry myself to sleep or something like that. But sometimes it's just, I don't know. So it's just trying to communicate to him directly, but sometimes you don't feel like it's coming across that way. Well, we heard a clip earlier that Jovi knows how to communicate very clearly what he wants before sex. So so with with that being said, uh, Jovi, now with everything that you've learned about your wife and how to create a rhythm, how would you say that you approach communicating now your sexual desires and needs to your wife oh you know i'm just like trying it all i'm like massage therapist every single night of my life i've been <laughs> That's like shopping it. quite a bit make, trying make, to be make super sweet up. i have to tell her she's beautiful 17 times a day because if i tell her twice she forgets in the massage therapist you're the atm card you are giving her all the compliments yep. <laughs> <laughs> doing it all 
we want you to really remember, though, in all fairness, that open and honest dialogue will significantly enhance your sexual relationship and overall intimacy, not only just communication, but how you communicate it to each other, not criticism. You are giving the other one the tools for success. What were some of your big takeaways from the experience, Jovi? For me, it was just one of the biggest ones is the most simple one, and it's communication, right? And the fact that we weren't communicating with each other as we should as a couple, as a married couple, we've taken that and used it to get better since we've left therapy, right? So I was actually the one who was against going to therapy in the beginning. I didn't want to do it, but I learned a lot more than I thought I would for sure. Yeah. Why were you against therapy out of curiosity? Uh, Not against it, let's say, but like I had just never been to therapy before. I didn't know much about it. Yara was actually doing her own therapy before we went there together. So I just like uneducated, I guess you can say. He thought that therapy is some kind of magic and people going to change his brain. (laughs) (laughs) But but it's not right. Now that you've come back, you've got real tools that you can use in your relationship. Wouldn't you say that, Jovi? Especially for people who are listening right now who kind of feel like, oh, I don't know if I can make that step. And you made that step and you did it publicly. No, absolutely. That's uh, that's actually a good point. I hope that people can, you know, watch us and understand that if you're thinking that maybe you need it, it's worth a shot, right? Like try it out and see if it can help you. There are a lot of tools that everybody's not aware of. So a lot of stuff that can help you. How about you, Yara? What do you think you have taken away from this experience? Oh my gosh, so much, to be honest, like so much. I've been working with a therapist for so many years and I never know, for example, what Dr. Peter said, that the most familiar feelings for me is the guilt and shame. How I never know about that before? And now I know about that. And for example, I am trying to choose, like when I feel like so much shameful or guilty about something, I'm like, why I'm choosing this? Why is it good for me? I shouldn't do that. And there is just so much, for for example, that the communication now with Jovi, that Jovi like, more open to therapy, that we can continue to do therapy. I feel like it was a very nice experience. Just by listening to the two of you, you seem a lot closer, more connected to each other. Would you agree with me? Yeah, I do feel like, you know, we've connected a lot better, you know. We are able to talk about our problems amongst ourselves now, and we were not able to do that so much before. So I think that's helped us come a long way. Therapists, should partners like Jovi and Yara just keep on going with this? Dr. Jason, I'll start off with you. The first thing I want to go back to is what Jovi said about counseling. Um, There are so many men and individuals who don't know about counseling. They have some notion what counseling is or isn't, and therefore they're scared to engage in counseling. Jovi, Yara, and all the couples, they're educating the world right now. They're letting people know that you can come together and you can talk about your problems. People need to know that counseling is a safe space where you can present problems. You can actually learn tools and have a better relationship. It actually works. The other thing, Dr. Lacey, that I wanted to know about is just for so many people, how do we help them understand that confronting their past and confronting their other issues really helps them build a better relationship in the long run? And that therapy is one of those avenues to really mending those fences. You know, it's important for people to know that going to therapy, diving into the things that they may struggle with, to understand why they do the things they do is strength. So when we find ourselves in the same pattern or we feel the same way over and over and over again, that's an indication that we may want to look back at something that may continue to be showing up in our present. So for people that are apprehensive, think about the unlocking the possibilities of their future. Sometimes the keys could be lying right in their past. And Petey, I mean, so much about past life regression therapy has come into it. I think you made a lot of believers out there, people who are never exposed to this therapy before. And Yara herself learned so much about herself and the choices that she made, Petey. She did. In her past life regression, she got a lot of the answers that she had been seeking before. And a lot of answers were received in the couple work that they did as well. Because ongoing couple counseling is so important because it just is that safe space. So they can continue to address issues that maybe we weren't able to get to at the resort. You know, we had two weeks with couples, two weeks. So rather 
rather than stuffing down any discontent, you know, having that safe forum to discuss these crucial feelings, it's so healthy. And then what does that do? It establishes a new norm, a new practice for both Yara and Jovi. So yeah, going every other week, going every three weeks as appropriate would be so emotionally healthy for them both. I feel like these 90-day couples are some of the strongest out there. They've already been through so many challenges. And Yara Jovi, we wish you the best. I mean, you guys are a fantastic couple. And uh, I can't wait to meet the next baby. (laughs) You and everybody else. (laughs) Keep your thoughts with me, please. (laughs) One thing I want to say, you know, you guys, why the last resort experience was really eye-opening for us and really good is because we have amazing, amazing, amazing therapists. And you guys are amazing. We want to thank you so much for being there uh, because it's really important to have a good therapist, somebody who can explain you, I don't know, tell you about yourself and open your eyes for normal life stuff. Oh, yeah. And Dr. Petey, too. Thank you, because you took Yara into this past life. And I was also a part of her past life. So now she thinks we need to be together forever because of that. So I think I'm in the clear. Even after the whole stripper debacle, I think I'm good. (laughs) You're so welcome, Jovi. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. I love it. Are they twin flames, Petey? Oh, yes. They are twin flames. All right. As we've learned this season, no couple is really immune to problems from infidelity and trust issues to miscommunication, loss of attraction. Partners can really face a lot of hardships that can be too hard to overcome without a little help. And we do have a listener that this actually hit a hard spot in their relationship, and they need a little bit of advice on how to move forward. So let's hear what they have to say. Hi, I'm Wanda, and I have a question. Me and my husband have been married for about three years now. We've been together about 11 years. We've been together so long, and we have our fair share of issues. One of them is that he can't seem to anticipate my needs. We both can see that the trash needs to be taken out or that we need to go grocery shopping, but I have to remind him to handle those things or else I handle it myself. When I bring up this issue with my husband, he promises to change and do a complete 180, but after a few weeks, he's back to his old ways. I completely understand that change takes time and no one is perfect, but how do I balance that understanding with my frustration? I'm starting to resent him. All right. So let's talk about that. I guess there's a term called weaponized incompetence. Can we talk about this? Is that what we're seeing here? Or is this just a a benign way of shirking off responsibility that a lot of men and women do when they don't want to do something when it comes to the hospital? Dr. Janie. You know, when I hear that they've been married for three years, the first thing that I think about is that behavioral change, it does not happen overnight. It takes time. And how they communicate or how she communicates her frustration and the stress of her husband not coming through for her and how she approaches that conversation, it has to be from a place of empathy and understanding. But what happens and sometimes in couples is then we start criticizing and we're coming with a certain level of an attitude and they are just want the problem to be fixed, that they're not really taking in the information that they need. So we have to be assertive. She wants to be assertive when she's communicating that request using like I statements and avoiding sounding accusatory He may need more support to make those changes versus just being told that he needs to make those changes. So she can do a schedule, a list of chores they can agree upon. But this way, the responsibilities could be clear so that they can hold each other accountable. How about you, Dr. Jason? Because obviously you understand what guys are feeling. What do you think about her and him not going grocery shopping? You know, she's put out lists. The trash needs to be taken out. Is this a strategy to kind of just say, you know what, I don't. I don't really want to do that. Possibly, possibly. And I I think what Dr. Janey said about taking time, I think is very important about the change of behavior. The good thing is she's communicating it. She's telling, hey, I want these things done. I'd like you to do these things. A suggestion I, I would make is to include feelings. How would it make her feel if he did these things? How it makes her feel when he doesn't do these things? So that's one of the elements that I would tell her to add into that situation. But also, we as men need to be praised through the progress in a sense of saying, hey, thank you for taking out the garbage. It made me happy when you took out the garbage. You know, it's like a little encourager that I think every now and then will kind of keep us on track and not allow us to really fall off. And I don't know if she's doing that or not, but I would make that suggestion that just encourage the behavior. We definitely want to make sure that when somebody is making the change, we take time to praise the progress. Wait, can I say something? Go ahead, Yara. Man, guys. 
garbage is your responsibility. No fake should be for that. <laughs> Take the garbage out from the house. But here's the thing. Sometimes people shirk responsibility and just kind of play dumb. And there's a term that's floating out there in the ethers called weaponized incompetence. Petey, have you heard about this? And what does that mean? And is that a bigger issue than the one we're currently talking about with our listener? Well, sometimes there can be a specific reason behind why people aren't doing what is being asked of them. Are we really getting to the root of the problem here? Is it sheer forgetfulness? Or maybe there's some passive aggressive behavior happening here. If the husband is saying, yes, 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 I can change, but eventually those behaviors are not matching what he says, well, maybe he's upset over something else that he's just not been talking about. So once that is fully explored, then the solution can become much more clear, I feel. You know, if it is sheer forgetfulness, which does happen, I always recommend to couples that they share the notes app on their phones, right? They each can add some things for the week. Each one can check it off. They can see it's checked off. That is more for communication. Add in when they see the check off. Hey, thanks, babe. So appreciate it. I mean, short, sweet, positive reinforcement. First of all, I think there's probably more going on in this situation than meets the eye. Jovi, are you going to be using the notes app? Oh my God, I wanted to comment so bad because I do this, right? Because Yara gets so mad whenever I'm telling her like, hey, I need you to do this, I need you to do this. Well, the only way that works is if somebody checks their notes because if they don't, it's never going to happen. Check your notes, Yara. I, I do. <laughs> yeah, once a month. Yes, but like, hey, but let's, let's put the real. When you ask some other person to do something and the person doesn't do it immediately and you go and do it, what the other person learned? Why, I'm not going to do it right now. They're going to do it anyway after. So that's your strategy. Oh, I see. Guys, I see. please don't do this strategy. I'm going to use the notes app. I think that's a very helpful thing, you know, especially when it comes to tasks. And, you know, Dr. Jason, I think you're right. We don't say please and thank you enough. We don't acknowledge each other enough, especially for the little things. So really a lot of practical application that our listeners can use in their everyday life if they want to get the honey-do list done. We know that couples therapy is a great resource to reconnect rekindle and reconcile romantic relationships. And it's an important consideration when you and your partner want to make things work, especially for the long term. Yara and Jovi, I appreciate you sitting down, especially in the hot seat and joining us at this round table. Dr. Janie, Dr. Jason, Petey. Oh, guys, it's always a pleasure. And thank you to everyone for listening out there and being part of our conversation. I hope you took home some lessons that you can use to build a beautiful foundation with you and your partner and your loved one. I'm Sukanya Krishnan. You can call me Suki. And this is 90 Day The Last Resort Sessions. Thank you, everybody, for sticking around. The 90 Day The Last Resort Sessions is produced by TLC and Sony Music Entertainment. TLC and WBD executive producers are Cameron Curtis and Margaret Kelly. The executive producers are Sarita Wesley and Jasmine Henley Brown. Our senior producer is Madena Parwana, and our producer for this episode is Samara Lenga, and our associate producer is Jade Abdul Malik. Engineering is done by Sam Baer, and our production manager is Tamika Balance Kalasny. 